with Hurricane Laura and Hurricane Marco uh, on their way, we just thought we'd take the opportunity to uh, share what it's like to live in an RV during a hurricane. Did you guys get that? That was very close. When we were in Harvey, we were living in an apartment at the time. There was so much flooding. There was like a boil water order that went yeah. out. So basically you couldn't just use the water yet to boil it because it was all contaminated with junk. So since we have a freshwater tank, holding tank, um, that's something that we have at least a, a, you know, for conserving a week supply mm -hmm. of fresh water. And we have practice so. with it. Like when we haven't needed it, we practice it to see how long it would last us. Yeah. And it did last us a good week. So that was good to know. Um, groceries. It's just always a good idea to, you know, head over to the store and get some extra groceries. You never know, you know, how bad it's going to be, how long um, you might be where you can't get to the store. So that's just good common sense. Um, we actually have, um, emergency rations just already stored. You can get them at like army surplus stores or, mm -hmm. I mean, like Bass Pro Shop and Cabela's even have different variations of emergency rations and stuff. Mm -hmm. so. That's always good to have, but if you, you know, don't want to go that route, just good to have a, a full fridge of groceries. Electricity. Um, we do not have a generator. Uh, but that is in the works. We are saving up for one, but that is a good idea to have on hand. Um, whether you're in an RV or in a house, you never know when the electricity's gonna go out. Yeah, the surge protector it's saved us. Job. So technically we lost power, but the surge protector caught it. So we're good. Well, probably didn't lose power, probably overpowered. So overpowered it. Surge, so the surge protector. That's like the third well, one that was probably on the property. Uh, yeah, I, there's probably been more than that. In this case, um, because we don't have a generator, we'll, we use our RV battery. Basically, it's just like, it's a deep cycle marine battery. It runs all the lights, most of the lights in here are LED, so they don't take hardly any, mm -hmm. any power at all. <clears throat> the CB is hooked up yeah. to, to the battery, so it doesn't need the, the shore power, but most all RV fridges are either um, electric or gas. Well, it's it's nice that they're giving you options if you go for some reason run out of electricity or don't want to run on electricity. They have the propane options for both heating water and the fridge. Yeah. Um, you talked about the CB earlier. Yeah, this particular one, it's the Cobra 29 LX. It has a weather, like a NOAA weather band built in. This particular one has a couple really nice features that it's listening for that that warning tone of you know a weather warning coming over the radio that triggers it it'll automatically kick on um to that weather station the national hurricane center is issuing advisories on tropical storm laura located just off the southern coast of cuba and on tropical storm marco we've used that and it's come in handy several times not with hurricanes but just other bad storms it's woken us up at night it does kick on even if the CB is off. Um, as long as it's got power, it, it will kick on. You'll hear the tone, but then it doesn't play the message. You have to go out and turn the CB, turn the radio back on to hear what it is. But, yeah, and it doesn't have to be a CB. They, they yeah. make just handheld weather radios. Um, you can get all kinds. But I guess having a, a CB radio um is also helpful i just thought of that and like for whatever reason if cell phones are down oh yeah you still sure. need to communicate with the outside world to see what's happening it's, it's a localized thing to where i mean it's it's you know neighborhood you know neighbors helping neighbors and and i think in in times of crisis we saw that in harvey too i mean yeah. I we mean, lost our car because we were stuck in an apartment but it's all that People helping people and and the CB is really good for that and you know people can pass along information. Mm -hmm. Old school good, communication, it, it, it works. Yeah, it's it, still it, out there. It doesn't. It never goes down. Also, uh, getting gas in your tank, getting extra fuel before the hurricane is probably a really good idea. Uh, during Harvey or after Harvey, there was a massive uh, gas shortage. There were stations that were just yeah. like out. We're empty. Out of 
gas and diesel fuel. Yeah. So it's a good idea before um, anything starts to occur that you fuel, fill your tanks. Also, uh, depending on where you are with your with your RV, um, for instance, right now we're at a campground. It's a good idea to communicate with your campground managers um, to ask them, so hey, does it flood out here? How has it affected your campground? Um, like for Harvey or for, you know, past hurricanes, stuff like that. And it might be a good idea if, if you feel like it's going to be bad and you feel like you may not want to stay um, in that area. Just uh, trust your gut. If you li if you're in a rig where you feel like you might want to pick up and leave that area you for can. a while, you can. That's the blessing of it. If we did feel like we weren't safe in this area, uh, we would... Um, uh, we have what we call a soft strike. We have a list of things that we put away before we leave, stuff that we don't have to live with every day, like decorations. We keep the decorations or put them away. Um, we take stuff off the wall, stuff that um, would be a little bit more meticulous to store and put away if we were in a hurry. We do that before we feel like we need to leave. So we already am somewhat packed to evacuate if we need to, so. And yeah, and I think, some of what's on that list, I mean, we have done and, you know, we do, we did talk about like, you know, filling your fuel tank, filling your, mm -hmm. you know, your fresh water tank. And it, it, again, it just comes down to common sense. What, just trust your gut. If you don't feel comfortable in an area um, and you have the ability to leave, then go somewhere else for the day. Like we even have escape <clears throat> routes planned ahead of time. Routes Our to, own, yeah. you know, evacuation route planned. Okay, if we don't feel comfortable in our location, this is where we're going to go. This is the route we're going to take. And this is the place we're going to stay at. So kind of plan all of that ahead of time. Um, it just makes the in, in the moment so much easier um, when you have a plan. So that's that's our two cents for how to how to survive severe weather in a rig and who knows what's going to happen with the two hurricanes but we just thought it was appropriate to share our thoughts and yeah hope this was helpful so update hurricane laura is actually becoming a bigger deal than previously anticipated so even um to the point where the owners of the campground told us it's probably a good idea to leave just because of the trees and the amount of wind that Laura is about to bring down. So we are actually going to implement one of our escape routes. Uh, we have a uh, RV park picked out. So we're going to go a little up uh, north and west uh, of our current location. Right now this county has already been in a disaster declaration by the governor. So we're going to head on out and uh, see what happens.